What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to use the Google Sheets API in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn today how to use the Google Sheets API in Python. And this can be very useful for automating all sorts of different tasks, especially when you have multiple people accessing the same files at the same time. It makes sense to use Google Sheet because it's synchronized. Uh, you can see what the other people are doing in somewhat real time. And the same will also apply to the bot that we're going to write in this video today. Whatever it does, we're going to see the updates in somewhat real time. So let's say, for example, you have a simple spreadsheet, you have some basic columns with data, for example, number one, number two, this is quite trivial here, we have a results column, and maybe we have a status column. So if we have some values here, like that, whatever they are, we might want to have a script that takes these values, does some calculation with them, maybe a simple addition, maybe something more complex, and stores the result in this column here. And maybe it also updates the status from not done. If we have not done here being the default, uh, it's going to process the calculation, whatever it is, it's going to put in some value here, and it's going to set this to done. And whenever it does that, we're going to see what it does in somewhat real time, we're going to be able to track the progress, even if the script is running somewhere else in the server, in a Raspberry Pi somewhere, we can use our computer to monitor this uh, spreadsheet and to see the updates uh, when they're happening. Uh, now, this is a very trivial example, something more reasonable, something more complex would be, for example, to have uh, a column URL, maybe we have company URLs, and then we also have a column CEO name. And this column is empty. Here we have some arrays, uh, not arrays, some URLs, we're going to just write a here. Uh, one use case would be go to that URL, do some web scraping, extract the CEO name, store it in the Google Sheets file. So for example, Mike Smith, uh, and then we can also have here a status and we can set it to done or processed. So automations like this can be done with Python with the Google Sheets API. And this is what we're going to learn in this video today. And we're going to do that by using the Python quick start guide from the Google documentation, we're not going to just follow it, I'm going to do the explanation myself, what but we're going to use this here, uh, in order to click on certain links, because we don't have to look for the sections then manually, you will find a link in the description down below to this documentation. And of course, some prerequisites, you have to have Python installed, you have to have pip installed. Uh, and what we want to do here is we want to create a Google Cloud project. So you want to follow this link, a Google, Cl uh, a Google Cloud project, uh, you want to click on it, this will lead you to another documentation. And here you want to click on the button, go to create a project. And when you're here, you're just going to choose a project name, for example, let's call this neural nine sheets project. And I'm going to just create this here. And then this you can see here, it's creating the project, I have a lock here of some test project that I that I did for um, in order to prepare for this video. But once you have this project now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to enable the API, the Google Sheets API for that project. So um, you go to that project, you select the correct project, in my case, this one now the neural nine sheets project. Uh, and then you want to click on API here on the left. Now, maybe you have it already pinned, I think I unpinned it for some reason. But then you just go to more products. And um, then we can see here APIs and services, enabled APIs and services. And when we click on that, uh, we should be able to uh, go up here to enable APIs and services. And then we can look for the Google Sheets API, which is this one here. So we click on it. And then we click on enable, this allows us now to access the API, um, or at least for this project that we're going to use the API is now enabled in order to access it, we need to do some authentication first. But first of all, we need to enable it. Once the API is enabled, we're going to go here still under APIs and services to the OAuth consent screen in order to set up this uh, consent screen, we're going to click here on external meaning everyone can use uh, this application with a test account. Um, if we or any test user can use it with a Google account, and we need to set the test users manually. So we're going to create that, we're going to give it a name, for example, neural nine sheets app. I'm going to use my uh, basic Gmail here as um, as a support email. And down here, we're going to also use the same email 
for the developer contact information. I'm going to save this. Uh, and then what's important here is we need to provide scope. Scopes, you could say, are permissions. So what are we going to be able to do with that API? We need to set the permissions here. And for that, we're going to click on add or remove scopes. And we're going to look for sheets. And the one we want to use is the uh, Google Sheets API. So auth slash spreadsheets, not read only because we also want to be able to uh, edit stuff. So we're going to pick this one. We're going to update. We're going to, uh, to scroll down here to save and continue. We're going to click on that. And now we need to add ourselves as test users. So if you want to use this um, yourself, you're going to have to add yourself. If you want to have other test users, you're going to have to add them here as well. I'm just going to add myself now by saying social at neural9.com. And then I add this user, save and continue. And then we have this done. So this is now the consent screen. And now we need to also get credentials for that consent screen. So we're going to go here still under APIs and services to credentials. And we're going to click up here on create credentials. And what we want to create now is an OAuth client ID. So the application type is going to be a simple desktop application, you can call this whatever you want again, neural nine sheets client, for example, create. And then you can see here the credentials. Now what we're going to use for this video today is we're going to download this JSON file. So you want to click on download JSON, and you want to store it in the directory of your uh, of your project. So I'm going to go to programming neural nine Python current, this is where I'm going to be working. Uh, and I'm going to call this file credentials.json. So credentials.json. And once this is done, actually, this is uh, the whole API process, it was a little bit complex. But um, now we're done with that, the rest is just the Python code. So with this, um, with this setup, we can now go ahead and use the Google API, the Google Sheets API. So we're going to go into our development environment again. And first of all, we need to install a couple of packages, if you don't have them already, for example, um, because you have already used Google Drive API or something like that. What we're going to do is we're going to open up the command line and we're going to type pip install Google dash API dash Python dash client, then a new package Google dash auth dash HTTP lib two and Google dash auth dash o auth lib like that. Those are the three packages that we're going to need. I already have them installed. So if I run this, you should see requirement already satisfied, nothing is going to change here. In your case, it's going to install these packages. So once we have everything installed, we're going to import the core Python module OS, we're going to need that here in a second. And we're going to import from Google, Google dot auth dot transport dot requests, we're going to import request with a capital R from Google dot OAuth to dot credentials, we're going to import credentials with a capital C from Google underscore auth underscore OAuth lib dot flow, we're going to import installed installed app flow. Uh, did I mistype something? Or why isn't it recognizing that? I think that's fine. I think it should work even if it underlines this here. And then from Google API client, we want to or actually from Google API client dot discovery, we want to import the function or the method built, and then from Google API client dot errors, we want to import the HTTP error. So those are the inputs. Let me just run this here to see if it works. Uh, no module named Google auth OAuth2. Uh, sorry, not OAuth2. That's the reason. OAuth lib is the actual name. So now it works. Those are the imports. And what we want to do now is we want to define the scopes. So remember, we had the scopes, uh, what are we allowed to do? The scope was this spreadsheets scope that we um, that we added to the project. So what we want to do first here as a constant is we want to create a list with scopes, you can also have multiple scopes. Uh, the one we want to use is HTTP or HTTPS actually, 
uh, colon slash slash Google APIs dot com slash off slash spread sheets. And if you add dot read only, you don't even need to add this to the project because by default, you can just read um, the spreadsheets, but by using uh, just spreadsheets. So without dot read only, we're also able to edit stuff. So this is the scope. Uh, what we also want to do is we want to provide a spreadsheet ID. So when we go back here to the spreadsheet, I can call this uh, something. But what we actually need is we need this ID here. So spreadsheets slash D, then this is the ID. So I can just copy that. Uh, I can go back into Python and I can say spreadsheet underscore ID is going to be that. Um, and then we can start with the main function. By the way, of course, this code is inspired by the quick start guide here. So we also have some similar code here, you can also use that. If you want to copy it, uh, I'm going to have it slightly different, but basically, it's going to be almost the same. We're going to define a main method here or a main function, we're going to set the credentials to none by default. And we're going to say if OS path exists. So if the following file exists, token dot JSON, if that file exists, we don't have it yet. Uh, we're going to just load it, we're going to say credentials equals credentials from authorized user file token dot JSON with the scopes that we defined. So this is just loading the credentials from the token file, which will be created when we use the credentials file. So we use the credentials file, we'll lock in, we um, so we, we give to certain or we give the respective permissions to this uh, application to this API call. Uh, and then we have this token. So we don't need to do it every time. So we're going to say here, if not credentials, or not credentials not valid. So if we don't have credential uh, credentials, or if those credentials are not valid, what we're going to do is we're going to say, <clears throat> uh, if we um, if we do have credentials, and credentials expired, and credentials dot refresh token, we're going to say credentials dot refresh. And we're going to call this request here. <clears throat> All right. Um, so basically, if we don't have credentials, uh, or they're invalid, we're going to say, uh, if we do have credentials, so basically, this means that we entered this if block because they were not valid. Uh, and if they're expired, and we can refresh them, we're going to just refresh them here. Otherwise, uh, we're going to just say flow equals installed app flow. This is a little bit of boilerplate code here that we need in order to be able to do anything. This is not any um, any sheet logic yet. This is just authentication with the Google API. It's a little bit tedious. So from client secrets file here, we're going to read in now our credentials .json. we're going to define the scopes as well. And we're going to say that the credentials are equal to flow dot run local server port equals zero. Um, and then whatever we did, if we have the credentials now, we're going to say open a new file token dot JSON in writing mode as token. And we're going to say token write credentials to JSON. So again, just for you to have an overview, we define the scopes that we want to have writing reading uh, spreadsheets, we want to define the respective spe uh, spreadsheet that we want to access this was not relevant up until now, um, or it was not relevant yet. Uh, here we have the main function, what we do is we set credentials to none, if we have already a token that we can use to authenticate, uh, we're going to just load it, we're going to just get the credentials from that token. Otherwise, if we don't have any credentials, or they're invalid, we're going to distinguish the two cases that we have credentials and they're expired, or that we don't even have credentials. And here, we're going to just refresh them here, we're going to uh, open up this, uh, we're, go we're going to load the credentials file. We're going to um, authenticate ourselves, and then we're going to create this token JSON file that did not exist before. So that's just the authentication process. What we want to do now is we want to say try. And we're going to also add an accept block here, I'm going to pass for now. 
Uh, what we want to try is we want to get the service, we want to access the spreadsheet service, and we want to then access the particular spreadsheet file that we defined up here with the ID. So we're going to say here service equals built, this is the method that we already uh, imported, built sheets version four, and the credentials are going to be equal to credentials, and sheets is going to be service dot spreadsheets. So this is the actual service that we're going to use. And now what we can do is we can just uh, from this file here, let's add some information, let's remove all of this here. Let's just say we have one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe then we have maybe 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Come on. 40, 50, 60, and then maybe we have something like A, B, C, D, E, F, like that. Now, what we want to do is we want to just get these values. We want to see if we can extract them from the file into Python so that we can process them, for example. So we're going to say result equals sheets dot values to get values. And we're going to get the following values. First of all, we're going to define the spreadsheet, spreadsheet ID like this in camel case, essentially, uh, or not exactly, what is this case starts with a lower case, but then it's basically Pascal case, I forgot the name. Uh, but the spreadsheet ID is equal to the thing that we defined. So it was this spreadsheet ID. And the range is essentially even though this is a reserved Python keyword, here now the range is a keyword parameter, meaning what area do we want to access. And first of all, we need to provide the sheet name. So in our case, this is sheet one, you can also rename this. So sheet one, exclamation mark, and then the cells. So for example, a one colon, and I think we had c six, yeah, a one to c six, which is exactly this section here. So this is what we want to have. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just take this and I'm going to execute this command. So we do sheets, which is the service for the spreadsheets, we get the values uh, from this spreadsheet ID, this is the range that we're interested in, we're executing the whole thing. And in order to get the actual values, what we do now is we say, let me just scroll to the left here, the values equals result dot get values as a string. And we're going to pass an empty list here. And now we can just say, for example, for row in values, print values. And if I did everything correctly, first of all, we're going to do the exception here, probably uh, properly, except HTTP error s error, we're going to print the error. There you go. And of course, we need to call the main function. So if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals this underscore underscore main underscore underscore and then we're going to just call the main function. So let's run this and see if it works. It opens up here. Uh, what's the problem here? Some requested scopes were invalid. Why is that Did I mistype something? Let me just scroll back up. Uh, Google apis.com. Maybe I forgot the www. W. Maybe I need that as well. Let's see. Now it works. Okay, so I'm going to choose here neural nine, which is my account here. It's important you don't want to go back to safety, you want to click continue. Uh, you're going to allow this application uh, to access the spreadsheets. Now it has completed. And here you can see now. Uh, actually, I want to not print values, but the actual row. So I run this again, you can see now I don't need to authenticate again, I can just rerun this because I have this token JSON file. And here you can see uh, the respective rows. So this is now just a theory, how can we use that, for example, to do some calculations? And how can I also write to cells? For this, we're going to slightly change this so that we can get information from one column, I'm going to do this here by using the example from before. So I'm going to say number one, number two, results and status, we're going to have some values here. Like this, we're going to have some values here. The results column is going to be empty. And here we're going to have not done. 
So this is now our file. Can I zoom in? There you go. Um, and we want to now take these values. So we want to take now number one, number two, we want to add them together, we want to put the result here, and we want to change the status to done instead of not done. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we're not going to access a range of values, we're going to access uh, specific cells. And we're going to do it by uh, using a row count. So I'm going to say here for row, and I should remove this then for row in range. And since the values start at uh, row two, I'm going to start from two up until eight, because if I go up until eight, seven is going to be included, eight is not going to be included. So I'm going to say for range to eight. And this is just going to be a number now. And what I want to get here is number one being equal to sheets values get and then here from the sheet, I just want to get a whatever the row is at the moment. So I'm going to use an F string here range equals F string sheet one exclamation mark a and then in curly brackets row the respective number. Um, I'm going to do the same thing for number two. The only difference is that I'm going to use column B. Um, and then I want to get the result. So I want to say result, or maybe I would want to say a uh, calculation result is going to be number one plus number two. Uh, and what I want to do now is I want to enter this value in C row. How do I do that? Well, first of all, I want to print processing num1 plus num2. And I want to make this an F string so that we have some lock message so that we can see that's actually that it's actually working in Python and working in Google Sheets at roughly the same time. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to say, sheets dot values dot update. So now we don't want to get values, we want to update values. And we still provide the same spreadsheet. So I'm going to copy that we still provide also the same range. So this stays essentially the same, I'm going to change this to C now. Um, but what we want to do now is we want to also specify two more things, we want to specify that the value input option is going to be user underscore entered in uppercase. And we want to say that the body is going to be equal to a dictionary where values is set to and then two lists inside of the two lists, the actual value, it's going to be in our case now, um, an S string a uh, not a sorry, num one plus num two, I'm not even sure if we have to turn this into a string. Um, but what's important here is that we cannot just go ahead and get the uh, get the cell value because we need to get, first of all, we need to get the actual value, then we need to go uh, deeper into the list, because we're going to to get a list of lists the same way that we get it here. So essentially, this get function here will return um, the same structure as this body object has here. So we're going to have a dictionary. So basically, what I need to do here is I need to say, uh, execute. And then uh, from that execute, I need to get values to basically get this key value pair. So I'm going to get that. And then since those are two lists, I need to also um, type index zero and index zero again, get values, index zero, index zero, this is just how the API is structured. And all of this needs to be turned now into an integer so that we can do calculations and not just string concatenations. So I'm going to say integer integer. Um, and then we have this calculation result. And what we want to put in here now is actually the calculation result. So that is the actual um, updating of the results column. Now we also want to copy this want to paste this we want to change this here to D row instead of C row. And we want to change this to done. And we don't need that I think this is actually enough. So let me just see if that works. Processing processing processing. And nothing is happening. Why is that maybe I forgot to execute I think I forgot to execute. So we need to say execute in the end here to actually make the change. But now when I run this, there you go, I'm doing nothing, you can see that Python is updating uh, the columns and 
I can see that I can monitor that process, I can track that process in basically real time. So this is quite useful if you have this running on a server, maybe you have some complex web scraping, um, or image editing tools. So <clears throat> sorry, uh, so maybe you have a data set where you have name of a person and then you have the URL to image of that person and you want to extract certain things like estimated age or estimated gender or estimated uh, I don't know wh whatever comes to mind so you can just process different things that cannot be processed in the spreadsheet so I cannot go ahead and say uh, equals in some formula that will extract uh, using machine learning the age from an image of a person, but I can pass that URL into Python, I can extract it with this Google Sheets API, I can process it, I can get the estimations and I can put them in here and I can mark this uh, row using a status column again as done. This is quite useful and when many people are working on the same file, uh, using this with the Google Sheets API might make more sense than just automating Excel. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.